Hey guys, Nika coming at you from the 505 in Zone 7 with another weekly garden update. Today's February 28th and we got a lot of our plants prepared but we still have quite a bit more to do. We're going to plant most of our lettuce, some spinach. We're going to be tending to our blueberries. And I have some uh, compost that I want to talk about and just some other garden tips that I can give you. So let's get started. Oh guys, look, I bought a composter. I'm gonna compost this year. Usually I just fertilize, but now I'm gonna compost and fertilize. If you're gonna grow a container garden, you have to do both. And I usually fertilize like once a month, sometimes every other week, it just depends. Some plants require more fertilizer than others. But now I'm gonna be composting, making dirt out of my kitchen scraps. So I bought this composter. I'll leave the link in the description box below of all the details. I've found and read that you need both of these, fertilizer and compost, to make your garden grow well. And there's a difference. There's the difference between composting and fertilizing. The compost, it improves the structure of your soil. It's low in nitrogen. It's organic matter and it's very beneficial to your garden. Um, it's free of pesticides, pathogens, and spores, and it doesn't disrupt the soil balance. Fertilizer doesn't feed your soil, it feeds your plants, and it could disrupt the balance of your soil, the pH balance. It comes synthetically, and I have this miracle Grow that is synthetic. I've had this for a very long time. There's a big debate whether to use synthetic uh, plant food in your garden. It's better to grow organic. So this is synthetic. They do promise that it'll make your plants grow bigger. It'll instantly feed your food and you should use it every seven to 14 days. And this is just, um, a uh, quick way of growing your garden. Okay guys, so this is the fertilizer I've been using. It's from Age Old. It's a brand called Age Old. It's a 1266, that's what we're using for grow. And total nitrogen, 12%. Available phosphate, phosphate is 6%. Soluble potash is 6% boron, copper, iron, magnesium, and zinc. And I put a cap full in here. It says one teaspoon per gallon. Transplants, it wants one tablespoon per gallon. That's what I put in there. Soil potting mix, one to three teaspoons per gallon. So I just put a cap full in, and this is a two gallon container. I'm also going to try some of this Mikos. Let's look and see the directions on here. This is to unleash the power of your soil with Mikos, natural root promoter, have been shown to increase the availability of nutrients and moisture required for plant growth while improving soil structure. Mikos provides a biological connection between roots and nutrients. Improves root structure, increases nutrient uptake, promotes natural biology. Great for vegetables, fruits, herbs, and flowers. Transplants, add one to teaspoon per plant site, ensuring direct contact. And you can um, actually make organic tea fertilizer, bone meal, you can use fish emulsion. I bought this composter and I'm really glad I did. I, I use so many vegetables in cooking and I end up throwing that, the rinds and everything away. This is gonna help so much to make quality dirt or soil in my garden. So guys, look in there. We're composting. I have all my scraps in there. And this has two sides. So this side I'm actually using right now and when it gets full, then we'll use this other side that's empty. That way you can rotate.
I just go up and do that every once in a while. <laughs> and this makes it so easy. And it gives you something to do with your kitchen scraps. So composting and fertilizing aren't the same thing. Um, fertilizing, you have to do it. But composting helps make dirt, so yay. So guys, these are my raspberries. And if you notice, they're coming up really well. But I'm just gonna give them a little more TLC and I'm gonna put a little bit of this steer manure. in there just to give them a little fertilizer. I'm going to fertilize them also and put a little more dirt on top of here. Yeah. And that'll help them out a lot. I'm going to put some of this dirt on top of here too. Just fill that container up. All right. Give it a little TLC there. All right, those are my raspberries, guys. Okay, guys, so I have this three in one moisture meter. It measures the moistness, the light, and the pH balance. Okay, guys, so I tried to get this pH balance. I even bought some extra um, sulfur, it was an additive. I put some peat moss in that. That was very expensive. And I'm kind of bummed out that I found out that you can use vinegar to lower the pH level in your garden. So, see it just, I, pl I put this in here right where I put those additives and it hasn't changed it any. So what I'm gonna do is use some, just some regular white distilled vinegar. So guys, using vinegar, it fights lime or hard water. One cup of white vinegar for four liters of water. You can create a spray and use it um, to kill any unwanted weeds. You can use it as a weed killer. And if you soak your seeds in vinegar and water, it'll speed up the germination process of your seeds. So I'm gonna be using this in my garden this year. And it's so cheap. So let's see what it does for our garden this year, guys. White vinegar, who would have thought? I'm gonna put quite a bit in here. I'm gonna put two tablespoons for two gallons. So I'm gonna put four tablespoons in this two gallon container. You can put this in other plants too, and you can affect the pH level a lot easier. That's what I read online, you know, you Google stuff. So we're gonna put two tablespoons of vinegar per gallon. So I'm going to put four tablespoons of vinegar for two gallons and we're going to water these blueberries and see if that changes the pH level. Okay guys, so we're going to saturate these blueberries and get them saturated with this vinegar solution. And we're just going to water this really good with that vinegar. We're also going to add some of this vinegar because I have a little bit left over to these blueberries. So let's water these blueberries with some of this. It almost works like fertilizer. And we're going to put some on these strawberries too. And maybe this lettuce. All right, let's measure this and see if it made any effect. Did it change it any? Nope. Let's put it a little bit like that. No, nope, didn't change it any. So we'll let that sit for a little bit. I put pine needles in here. I've put vinegar. I bought some additive. It had sulfur in it and other additives designed for blueberries so we'll just keep checking this and see if that level will change okay guys so i have this broccoli planted now we're just going to put this heating mat under here and i have this little lead right there so it's monitoring how hot those seeds are getting so guys look i planted this broccoli 
probably about three days ago and it's already sprouting. Look guys, my broccoli is really growing. It's only been about five days since I planted this. And look at them. I planted these seeds about seven days ago. I didn't expect them to germinate like this. They germinated so fast using this heating pad and this tray. And this tray with these, um, I use this rapid root um, plant starter. And in seven days they started. So I think I'm gonna have a lot of broccoli this year. Look at that, look at that. I'm just gonna plant these today and then we'll just cover them with leaves for protection. So guys, look at these broccoli. They are um, so big, I need to bury them or I'm gonna lose them. Oh wow, look a worm. There's a worm in there. Anyway, so I'm gonna dig this really super deep and try to put them so just the flower is showing. Just like that. Yeah. yeah. That way that stem goes deeper in there. And let's just, I have six of them. So let's put the, one of these in there. I wanna put them super deep. I love this. All right. Let's put one in the middle. And I barely planted those a week ago. They said they wouldn't sprout for two weeks. So today's February 29th. It's the leap year day. And I'm just gonna plant them. Let's try to get them as deep as we can. Eh. One of them broke off. What am I going to do with that? Put it in there anyway. And of course, this is going to shrink down I have a lot of leaves in there but that's okay we can kind of keep adding a little dirt very carefully a little bit at a time there's a lot of leaves in here so the dirt is going to stay um, pretty loose okay guys so we have our broccoli planted Just stick a little sign in there so we know what it is okay then I'm gonna fertilize it water it and then cover it with some leaves and hopefully they make it oh look a little worm I have a lot of worms in my yard look look he's freaking out okay guys so we're gonna fertilize these I know it's still gonna get a little cold here, so I'm gonna put a few of these leaves on top. On top, and then I'm gonna sprinkle just a little dirt on top of there, just to hold these leaves in place. There. February 29th, leap year day, guys. Have our broccoli planted. I'm gonna fertilize these radish, these potatoes, 
for fertilizing these greens. These are peas for fertilizing the carrots and the onions for fertilizing blueberries. We're going to fertilize these raspberries. We're fertilizing the strawberries and the lettuce. All right, guys, got our fertilizing done. Okay, guys, so I get these containers at Lowe's. They're about $11 a container, which I think is reasonable because they're so heavy duty. I bought some at Walmart. They just didn't hold up like these ones. So what I'm doing is just putting holes in them for drainage okay guys so i'm using this ryobi drill just to drill these holes into the container i put a 3 8 inch hole saw that should allow drainage without all the dirt running out okay guys and then we want to definitely put some on the sides here i put some on the top and close to the bottom on each side which makes drainage easy for this all right guys so now we have all those holes in there and on the sides so now we can just start planting so guys last year i planted this lettuce and it came up but it didn't do very well in the container i had it in so i bought this other container I'm just going to take these out as careful as I can. You want to make sure that you have quite a bit of root under there. I'm just going to take these out. Dig around them. That's a pretty good clump. That's what you want. All right, that looks really good. Get this last one. Ooh, yeah. So guys, I'm gonna plant my lettuce in here. I bought this container. It's a 14 gallon container at Home Depot. And I saw this when I was walking through there. So I drilled a bunch of holes in it, some holes on the side. I'm just gonna fill it up with leaves and transplant my lettuce in here guys we get a lot of bermuda grass in the southwest it just grows everywhere watch it just grows in these walls look at that and they just throw out these shoots see it just throws out these shoots so i cut one of these bags in half this mushroom compost i have a lot of these bags and i just cut them down the sides right there just to make them wider. And I cut them down the sides and I'm just gonna put them in this spot so that grass will quit growing. If it doesn't have sunshine and um, water, it will quit growing and then we won't have to weed as much. Okay guys, so I filled this, I drilled all these holes in here. I like to put my containers on top of pellets. That helps them drain a little better. So let's put some leaves in here. I'm just gonna fill it up with leaves. And, okay guys, so we're just gonna pour some of this dirt in here. All right guys, let's pour some more dirt in here. So we're going to put some of this steer manure in here. Alright, that's pretty full. Alright guys, let's just put a little more dirt in here. Just to mix up that compost. Alright. 
That's a nice little bed for some lettuce. So we're gonna put all kinds of lettuce in there. I'm gonna put these fancy ones up front. All right, and then we'll fertilize them and water them. That's gonna look really good. Let's put this one. I want this one over just a little bit. This one right here. I want to kind of bury them deep so that they're covered with dirt. All right, now all we have to do is fertilize them and water them. And then we're gonna add this butter crunch lettuce I got in that survival kit. So this butter crunch lettuce, it says, mm, direct sow, sun partial, sun partial shade, ah, tongue twister, six to eight inches apart, plant depth, an eighth of an inch, it should germinate in seven to 14 days and maturity day to 65 days. So I'm gonna just plant this now. All right, guys, this is what this seed looks like. We're just gonna spread it around a little bit and see, you know, get a better possibility of germination this way. We don't know that every seed's gonna germinate. Okay guys, so this is what this lettuce seed looks like. That's what the lettuce seed looks like. We're just gonna cast it around. It's too hard to plant one little seed eight inches apart. And come what may, we're also gonna plant this, um, we're also gonna plant some of this loose blend lettuce. I'm just gonna mix it up. This is what this seed looks like. I'm gonna put this mostly on the back there. Well, yeah. All right. Okay. Now we're just gonna cover it with some dirt. Stirred out, and we'll see what we get. We're gonna water it and feed it some fertilizer. All right, guys, lettuce planted. So, guys, I repurposed this tub. I just kind of cut the top off of it. I just didn't want to have to put too much dirt and waste a lot of my compost dirt in here. So, what we're gonna do today. We're gonna plant this spinach in there. Okay guys, so it should emerge in five to 10 days, half inch uh, depth for soil, a group of three seeds every six inches, row spacing is 12 inches, one one inch tall, thin every to every six inches, and then maturity date is 28 to 48 days. And let's see if there's anything else in here. Soil temperatures above 85 degrees halt germination. So that's why I'm planting these March 1st. Let's see. And, all right. This is a matador spinach. You'll be strong enough to fight the bulls with nutrient packed spinach. That looks really good. It's a drawn picture. I'm gonna put a duck couple of different types of spinach in here. This is what the seed looks like. So we're just going to put some back here. These ones back here. It's, you're supposed to plant them in partial shade. These are a cool weather plant. So that's why you want to get these done early in the spring. I have some of this heirloom spinach that I'm going to put in there. I got these from, from that bug out bag. These are from Gardener's Basics. Let's put some of these in there. 
Yep, these are what these seats look like. So let's put these in the front and see what happens. I'll mark these. So now I'm just gonna throw some dirt on there. Guys, oh, is that a big old long worm? Oh, look, guys, look at that worm. <laughs> I have a lot of worms in my yard, that's good. That means my soil is really good. All right, guys, so we're just gonna fertilize, we're gonna fertilize those and water it. There we go, our spinach is planted. So guys, it's March 1st and look, my onions are coming up. Yay. And I have some carrots coming up. I have carrots coming up, look. March 1st. Also my turnips are coming up. They're sprouting. These are my collards. They're not coming up yet. Well, I'm getting a little activity right there. These are mustard greens. And it looks like my collard greens are sprouting. These are my peas. These are sugar snap peas. These are sugar daddy peas. Look, they're coming up. They should be sprouting. Let's see. I have this little sign. They take four, seven to 10 days, seven to 10 days to sprout and 60 to 65 days to mature. I planted these a couple weeks ago. No potatoes yet. I am getting radishes. All different kinds of radishes are coming up. Look at that. We'll be able to harvest these in a couple of weeks. I write on the back of these little signs that I have. So they should um, sprout in three to four days, but it's been a couple of weeks. And in 21 days, we'll be able to harvest these. So they're coming up. So I would say in three weeks, we'll be able to harvest these because they're just barely germinating right now. Look, guys, my broccoli is sprouting. I planted broccoli a couple of weeks ago in this container and it looks like they're sprouting. So exciting, I love spring. Here's my cilantro, guys. It's doing really good, look at that. So guys, it's March 5th in the 505, zone seven. And the trees are budding, look. It's definitely springtime. That's my weekly garden update. I wanna thank you for watching my video. If you have any comments, leave them in the comment section. You can pound that like button if you like this content. And we'll see you on the next video. Bye.